Hey, it's me, Jetski, and today we are talking about Mega Man Lost Media. Before we start, though, I will have to ask you to please like and sub, as it really helps the channel out. We just hit 97 subscribers, so let's go. Let's try and get to 100 pretty soon. Anyways, on to the video. Now, the first piece of Mega Man Lost Media is really interesting, since we actually don't technically know what it is. You see, in 2008, a little after Mega Man 9's release, an interview had been conducted with Seth Killian. Now, in case you don't already know who Seth Killian is, he was a former Capcom community manager, and during an interview, he had stated that there was still one secret left in Mega Man 9 that still had not been discovered. Of course, this led to massive fan speculation of what the secret could be. There were popular theories like the fact that it might be some kind of different power-up or maybe a completely different room. However, theories like these were quickly shut down by Capcom. This quickly led the internet to really get interested in this mystery. However, after fans spent months looking for it, there were still no ideas what the secret could possibly be. Finally, Seth Killian decided to speak out on the secret. He had stated that the secret itself was not actually in the base game. He said that the secret was actually in an upcoming DLC that had not yet been released. In the latter half of 2009, this DLC was finally released. Now, if you didn't already know, Mega Man 9's DLC is not a standard DLC. It's not any new character or anything. The DLC is actually in endless mode. This endless mode allowed players to travel through thousands upon thousands of Mega Man levels randomly generated. This led to the stunning revelation that Whatever the secret was, it had to be in one of the thousands upon thousands of levels that were randomly generated. This led to the question of what exact level was the secret on. The most consistent answer is screen 1500, which is actually insane and nearly impossible to get to. It's considered near impossible simply because you can only take one hit throughout all the levels. If you get hit once, you have to completely restart. Which is insane because as the levels keep going on, they progressively get harder and harder. And you only get one chance to go through them. And instead of just remembering what you learned from last time, you can't do that because they are randomly generated. That led many people to come up with a good idea. That being cheating. People decided to use the debug mode to spawn at screen 1500. However, when they got there, there was no secret. Nothing at all. It was just a standard level. There was also an effort to use data mining to find the secret. However, that didn't even work. This led to the question if the secret was even real in the first place. There's only two ways we can find out if the secret is real or not. Either Capcom comes forward, or Seth Killian comes forward. And Seth Killian has continually stated that the secret is real. Even years after he stopped working for Capcom, he continually has stated that the secret is real. So there are a couple theories that I really want to go over real fast. The first theory is that Seth Killian has actually lied about it, and there is no secret in the DLC for Mega Man 9. So this does make a lot of sense, however, the only thing that really disproves it is the fact that he doesn't work for Capcom anymore. He works for a studio called Riot. So why would he keep up a lie if he doesn't even work for the company anymore? The next theory is one that I came up with personally. My theory is that it randomly generates on no specific screen at all. It'll just show up randomly, and it'll be a little surprise or something. This would also explain why it never shows up specifically in debug mode. The only thing that really disproves this theory, however, is the data mining. That would definitely have shown up there. My last theory is that maybe it appears on screen 999,999. Now I know that seems kind of like a stretch, but it would make sense, especially since some of the statements Seth Killian has said on the matter. When Seth Killian had actually seen a picture of someone claiming that they made it to 999,999 levels of the endless mode in Mega Man 9, he had said that they probably had seen the secret. Although the data mining once again does support the fact that this might not actually be true. That's pretty much all I have to say on this one. Really interesting. A lot of stuff that's here and really makes you question if it's even real in the first place. Hopefully it is, and hopefully it's not something dumb and stupid. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say though, on to the next thing. The next piece of Mega Man Lost Media is a really interesting one. You see, it relates to the 1994 Ruby Spears Mega Man series, specifically the Spanish dub. After its airing in the mid-90s, it just completely disappeared off the face of the earth. No traces of it at all, except for a couple clips from the second episode in Season 1. When trying to find out more information about this, I thought it would be interesting to try and contact Ruby Spears directly. 
That was until I found out that they went defunct in 1996, which is very unfortunate. Something you could do is try and find out who was in charge of licensing this stuff out to different countries and companies so you could understand who was in charge of creating the dub. Unfortunately, this is pretty much where my investigation ended. I don't have any more ideas about where to go from here. If you guys have any information, any information at all, please tell me about it in the comments below. That's pretty much all I have to say on this one though. On to the next thing. The next piece of Mega Man Lost Media is a really interesting one. You see, it's a lost episode of Mega Man in T's English dub. The episode in question is Spoutman's new hero. Now this episode was only ever aired once on Teletoon in Canada. Now it was actually supposed to air on Kids WB in the US on September 10th of 2005, but was randomly preempted for Bubble Man's plan. What really interests me though is how much this has in common with Kirby right back at you's lost episode. I'm starting to wonder if this was a problem relatively to 2005 because a lot of these dubbings and episodes and stuff in 2005 just never aired in the US due to certain stupid reasons. Anyways back to Mega Man NT. Doing a little bit of research, the people in charge of this English dub was actually known as Viz Media. Now Viz Media is actually still in business today so there might be a chance of actually contacting them and finding out specifically about the Mega Man Lost episode. Unfortunately, there's not much else to say. It's really interesting, but unfortunately, I pretty much ran out of things to talk about with this one. On to the next piece of Lost Media. The last piece of Mega Man Lost Media we will be talking about today is the Mega Man Anniversary Collection. It is an unreleased compilation of Mega Man video games for the Game Boy Advance, specifically the first five games. In 2003, Capcom had announced Mega Man Anniversary Collection for multiple consoles at the time, including PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. There was also a companion piece called Mega Man Mania, which was later just renamed to Mega Man Anniversary Collection as well. Now just to unconfuse you for a second, this is actually the game I am talking about, the one that was renamed on the Game Boy Advanced. Well you might be wondering, why didn't this game come out? Why was it cancelled? It's pretty simple. They just lost the source code. I'm not even kidding. They lost the source code. At least that's what rumors state, but there was a lot of rumors and a lot of viable sources that claimed that they had actually lost the source code to this game, which is actually crazy. I have no idea how they would go about doing that, but they did. They actually lost the source code. Capcom was originally forced to just reprogram portions from scratch. There was also a rumor that the collection was moving to the Nintendo DS. This rumor was neither confirmed nor denied. Eventually the game was cancelled indefinitely, which means permanently in Capcom terms. That's pretty much all I have to say on this one, really interesting. I still can't believe they lost the source code, but hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, that's all for this one, on to the conclusion. In conclusion, there's a lot of Mega Man Lost Midi out there. Stuff that I haven't even mentioned yet. Stuff that I probably don't even know exists. Stuff that you probably don't even know exists. It's crazy how much Lost Media there truly is out there, and a lot of it is truly worth documenting. It's sad that a lot of this doesn't get documented, and I think that's a part of a big reason that I really do this in the first place, so people can learn about these things and help each other find stuff like this. That's pretty much all I have to say for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please think about giving a like and sub. It really helps out the channel. It was Amiya Jetski, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.